Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling a Zim Roar. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue taking a look at what's new in Zim 016 right here. We've taken a look at shaders and an overview of all of them. So we're at zimjazz.com, and we press on that to find out what's, what's new. There's other ways to get there too, but that's probably the easiest. And then down in here, we've seen bubblings on these guys. We're now going to take a look at Zim, um, how we brought in the speech, the speech API from JavaScript. It's not too bad. It's pretty easy to use, but we've made it hopefully a little bit easier. And uh, thanks, Carl, for um, pioneering that. And now we press on this, and here's an example. Listening. Uh, now we are listening, and it will tell us the words or point to the words inside of this box. If I start talking again, it changes the color, and here are my new words. Pretty amazing. The accuracy is quite good. Hopefully you'll find the same. <laughs> Stop listening. <laughs> okay, isn't that cool? And listening. Uh, down here at the right is the percentage that it thinks it is confident. Wow, that's 90%. <laughs> cool. That was actually 99%, I think. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop that. <laughs> laugh, laugh, laugh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stop that and we'll go to the talk. Oh. Listening. Stop. 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 Okay. And we go to the top, or the talk right here. And here is uh, David. Hello, world. Here is Linda. Hello, world. Uh, what else have we got here is an English male. Hello, world. And a, Hello, world. a British female and other languages as well. Cool, huh? Um, so let's take a look behind the code uh, of this and we'll see what's happening. I'll just go back to the, the listening one. Here is speech. This is continuous speech. We've got two different speeches. The first speech we did wasn't continuous. I suppose I should show you that. That's called speech two. So on here, add the number two. So this was the first one we, we did, start listening. Listening. Hello, I am listening. Uh, start listening. Listening. Hello, I am listening now. Listening. Hello, I am listening now. Okay, that must have come in from something before. But now it's not continuous. You see how it's not continuing doing it? I'm going to... Listening. Now it is listening again while that fades out. Now it is listening again. Well, that fades out. It was 99.8% sure. So in this case, it would be good like, hey, speak a command. And you speak a command, and then it waits until you stop, and then it evaluates that command or does something. So that would be good for like voice control, possibly. The other one is a bit more fun because I can keep on talking, and it keeps on telling me what I said. But this one is actually probably more practical. Um, all right, because if, if you're expecting a command, you can get it, evaluate it. It's not like this going on forever talking kind of thing. Okay, so uh, those are those two versions. And that's back to the first version. Let's go take a look at the code of the first version, the continuous. We're bringing in Zim016 here. And there's the other two files that we might want to look at. In the easiest way, I suppose we could look at this, is basically you make a new speech. New speech. If you say speech.talkwords, it will start talking words. If you say speech.listen, it will um, dispatch a result event with every word you say, basically. All right. Uh, that's not the event there, though. That should be a comment. So those are the basics of it. Pretty easy, huh? Nice. And so that's uh, been simplified from the speech API. And now uh, one thing to notice is that listening is not working on iOS, on mobile, for web apps. It does for native apps, but not web apps yet. 
So uh, you could lobby Apple and tell them to get their act together. Everybody else has had it for six years. It might be their privacy thing. They just don't even want to go there or something like that. I don't know. Or maybe they're trying to get people. Probably I wouldn't be surprised if they're just trying to get people to buy their Apple at home. What, what, what does Apple do when you talk to Apple? Is uh, Siri got like a Google thing? What was Google's one called? Um, not Cortana. That's Microsoft's. Google is Hey Google. Is that it? I don't know. Does Apple have a Hey Apple? I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, for some reason, they're not supporting that. So if it's if the mobile is iOS, then we're saying, sorry, it's not supported uh, by Apple. It's not us. It's Apple. However, Apple does talk to you. So in here, we've got a talk example uh, right there. Speech.talk listening. And you can make it talk to you. I can't remember for sure if you have to turn the um, sound on, like if you have to say, I'm allowed to use sound. I don't think so. I think it, it will do it. Um, so that's too bad, but oh well, what can you do? So here we have new speech. Then we have a button. This is a toggle button that's going to toggle between start listening and stop listening. When we click on the button, if it's toggled, we're going to say, I'm listening. That's optional. You don't have to do that. And then we turn on speech.listen. This is going to default to interim results. That means go for each word. If I listen with a false there, then it will uh, not do each word. It will listen until I stop talking. There's a pause like this. There we go. Okay, and at that point it stops and the whole thing stops and you have to restart it again. So anyway, that's what we're doing if we're listening. Otherwise, we tell it to stop listening and we remove the backing and the circle. Uh, those are the, the backing is sort of where all the text is going on top of the backing. So I can change the color or we can change the color there. And we're doing a stage dot update uh, depending on what's needed there. So here is the circle where we're putting the percentage in there. That's a label inside of a circle. Here are the series of colors for the boxes. I'm setting a current color and I'm making a backing rectangle for that box. When we receive the result, so this is the result, we're going to get e.words. Yay, that's pretty easy, isn't it? And e.confidence, the event, the event object e. If you had evt there for event or something, you'd have evt here. If you have event object all spelled out, you'd have event object right here, but we usually use e. So there's e.words will give us the words and e.confidence is that I don't think it's a percentage. Let's have a look here. No, it's a ratio. So it's from zero to one. And so we're multiplying that by 100 and flooring it to get its confidence. Probably could have just rounded that. I think round that probably would be nicer to it. There was never reach 100. <laughs> It'd be kind of annoying, wouldn't it? Uh, oh, if it were 100, it would floor to 100. Yeah, that's that's all right. Okay, or, or sorry, it would, yeah, it would floor even if it were right at 100. Yeah, never mind. Okay, I was thinking of flooring a random number that never would get to 100. So that's the percent text that is showing up inside of this circle right here, this label. Which one's the label? Percent. That's the label the text property to the confidence. Uh, and the other label though, we're capitalizing the first first word, uh, the first um, yeah word, it gets capitalized at the beginning. And we're passing in E dot words to our label. We're also setting a backing width and height to our label height and label width. That will make the size of the text fit in that dimension. Um, we did have some problem leaving the same text field there and changing the words in it. Afterwards, when we tested it, we didn't run into the same problem. But at some point, we said, okay, well, let's just remake the label. So we're remaking the label for each result we get. Uh, probably didn't have to. I think we could have kept the label out and fit it in there. And certainly, if you're not doing any backing sizes, or sorry, label width and label height, that that's a hard comp, uh, a hard... Uh, computation in behind there. We're trying to fit text into a box. So we do that by putting the text in too big and then 
making it half his size and then making it half his size until finally the text fits in the box. Anyway, I don't know if something was messing up in there when we were doing that dynamically. Like I said, when we tested it again afterwards, because we thought there was something fishy going on, we couldn't reproduce the problem. So, uh, whatever. Okay, good. Speech on end. So once we end, that's when we've stopped talking. We're telling it to listen again and change the color. So that's why it seems to end. And then when I start talking again, it begins again because we've told it to listen again. Cool, huh? You don't have to do that. If you get an error, that error comes up if you don't talk for, I don't know, some amount of time. Like it will come on and say, yeah, I'm not talking, should we try it? <laughs> uh, great, I'm gonna sit here, go start listening, and I'm not gonna talk, okay, you ready? Listening. Okay, so that's how long it took. And then this button went back to start listening. If we really wanted to, at this point, we we told it to stop trying to listen. We disposed some stuff. We set it all up at the beginning, but we could have just taken all that out and said speech.listen. And then even if we didn't listen, after that amount of time, it would try and listen again. And if we didn't listen, it would try and listen again. It just keep on listening. Then when I come in 10 minutes later, I could start talking and it would still be listening. So that seems to be that if you have an error, like if it says there's no voice, then you can just keep on restarting it if you so desire. But we instead said, we're gonna turn that button off because you probably didn't really want to listen, right? Listening. And now we will test. Will this wind be so mighty as to lay low the mountains of the earth? <laughs> How about now? Uh, this has been Zim Speech, and I am Dr. Abstract with Bubbling at Zim. I'm going to keep on trying to talk as long as I can without pausing, so this text keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and we see how well this speech analysis works. Incredible. <laughs> Goodbye! This is Dr. Abstract here, and this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. Um, come on in to zimjs.com slash slack, although we're changing that to a different forum soon, or zimjs.com slash discord. Uh, and behind here, uh, this thing is still saying what I'm saying. Oh, it's a little bit, wow, you know, that's amazing. I think speech recognition has come quite far. I don't know if I could code with speech recognition. That was one of the funniest things I saw on uh, early Google. When Google first came out, I watched somebody trying to program with speech recognition. It was so frustrating. I can imagine if I've said something wrong and I want to go back that I would still have some frustrations with all those commands. But uh, certainly the speech recognition, at least with my voice, is pretty, pretty darn good. Oh, we didn't look through the talk with voices. Oh my god. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fooled you. Here we go. We're returning. Here we go. We're returning. It said it. I had all that other fool juice stuff in there earlier. Uh, we forgot to look at this talk version. Bing. Talk is a little bit tricky. Uh, at one end, it's easy. But to get this list of available voices is a little bit tricky because that you don't get that right away. That depends on the user system. And again, uh, since it depends on the user system, you can't automatically assume that they're going to have any of these. You kind of have to wait until it gives you the results. So I'm going to go to Voices. Uh, remember that Speeches 2 was a slightly different version. You can look through there. Most of the stuff is roughly the same. It's just the one thing you want to watch is this part right here. Speech.listen. False. That means it's not interim. And you only get the results after pausing. A little bit awkward looking, but whatever. Okay, that's that one. Voices. So like I said, voices is quite easy. It's just this, speech.talk, the words. But if you want to get the languages that are available, that's a bit trickier. So um, we get a new speech. Then on voices changed. So here's the event that they've sort of specified called voices changed. That waits until we get some voices. 
when we do that, and we've simplified this as well, of course, because we're Zim, but when we do that, we can get the list called speech.voices. So now voices will be an array of all of the voices that are available. And when we talk right here, speech.talk, we're saying hello world, if the list is there, so if we have, like let list is empty to start, but when the voices come in, when we know the voices, then we can say, uh, this, uh, it only seems to run once, but you have to watch it. Maybe this could run a couple times, like, hey, we got some voices, or later on, some more voices might be added. I, I don't know if that would ever happen, but we're just basically watching out for that so that we don't try and make two lists. If there is an existing list, get rid of it. And now we're going to listen to the, or we're going to use the voices here. So anyway, this is our list. So if the list, when we're trying to talk here, if there's a list, then we're going to use the list's text there. Uh, why do we use the list text? So, oh, right, the text is the value. So whatever the list is currently selected will be the value of that. By the way, the value is not speech.voices. Or is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it is. This is how we simplified it. Um, when we get voices, we're actually getting voice objects. In behind, there are these things called voice objects. The voice objects have all sorts of stuff, like which language it is, uh, the, the, the string of the voice, the this, the that, the other thing. But anyway, you're not normally allowed to pass in just the name of the voice. You have to pass in the voice object. But the voice object is a pain in the neck. That means we have to have this list and we have to hold the voice object in behind. And we kind of said, I would rather just tell um, my talking, I would rather just tell the talk this thing, whatever's on that, rather than have to do one more lookup table. So we hid the lookup table in behind. You don't have to worry about it. You just pass in whatever this is and then you can go. So possibly if, if you wanted to start off with Microsoft, blah, 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 you could have just put that right in here. Microsoft, uh, David, well, that's the default for me anyway. It might be some other for you though. So we just have to watch it and you need all of whatever's in there. That's not enough. Okay, so all of the stuff, English Canada as well. Because there's Linda, maybe for some different place, and you know, you never know. So anyway, with all of that, you could start up. The problem is they might not have that voice, in which case it would bump to their default voice. It wouldn't be a problem. But they might not have that voice. Uh, but they could have other voices that they, they want instead. So that's what I mean by the voices are a little bit tricky. You want to get all the voices in. We don't know what their default voice is or anybody's default voice. We don't know what voices they have. It's all going to be custom to their thing. Now, I did just get a message from Carl, who has helped prompt all this, that there is some sort of Google initiative to uh, have cloud voices, like uh, voices available on the cloud, much like Google Fonts have the voice or the, the font objects available on the cloud. So we'll be looking that looking into that in the future. It may be that there's uh, a better way to support more voices than we expect here. But these will access the default voices on your computer and then let somebody pick up from those default, default voices. And indeed, that does work quite nicely. Uh, language is all still a bit of a mystery to me. Hello, world. Hello, world. I think it's saying hello, world, but not in a different language, just with the accent of that Hello, world. Place, possibly. I'm not. I'm not totally sure. Hello, world. All right. So anyway, well, uh, most of this stuff is just um, wrapper functions on the existing um, on the existing speech API, and therefore, if you go to the docs here and type in speech, try and spell it right with two e's. It's not like speak e a k. Um, but if you come in here, you'll see that under the properties right here, you have access to voices, voice objects, voice language, recognition. So in terms of all of the speech recognition, 
This is ac access to the JavaScript speech recognition object that gets made. And there may be more attributes. Take a look here. More attributes that you can set that you want to do to be able to recognize different languages. You might have to say my speech dot recognition that gains us access to this dot language is equal to whatever language you want to start off with. OK, and that that can help you there. And there's some information on the voices as well. Now remember, there's two sides, the voice side and then the, the um, recognition side. So the talking side and the uh, listening side. OK, there's your various events as well and what you can do with those. And that has been, ah, now we conclude. <laughs> Yay. Well, oh, that's been a Zim bubbling. <laughs> Woohoo. Sorry for the second part. Part one, part two, all the same bubbling. And one more time, come join us at Slack or Discord. Slack, uh, zimjs.com slash Slack is going to be changed to a forum coming up. And that's that'll be a future bubbling. And zimjs.com slash Discord still going on. We'll maybe see you guys there. We'd love you to work with Zim. And if you're working with Zim already, that's great. Have a great day or night. Uh, I think I might get a little snack. Cheers.